three, two, one, and welcome back to the SBH podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to be going over soft plastics. Um, and the reason I'm going to be going over soft plastics is I did a post recently on my Instagram and uh, just because what I did, well, really, let's go way back. I did, not way back, but a few weeks back, I did a post of a little video post. Uh, it was part of my quick tips on my YouTube channel, but I posted it on Instagram and I just ran through the plugs that I was going to have in my plug bag um, for spring fishing. And I didn't mention any of the bucktails slash soft plastics that I use just because I don't really like using bucktails and soft plastics. But unfortunately, bucktails and soft plastics work extraordinarily well. I guess fortunately, unfortunately, they work extraordinarily well in the spring. And you can't, it's, it's, Really, you're missing out if you're not fishing with a bucktail or a soft plastic during the spring, and especially soft plastics. Bucktails are one that I do use, especially when the surf is rough, which it happens to have been extraordinarily rough the last two springs. But um, I I really, really like using, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm very confident and end up catching a lot of fish using soft plastics. So what I did today is... I, I took my little bucktail soft plastic pouch off the front of my ODM uh, surf bag. Uh, and so I'm just, sorry for the crazy noise of me opening this. I'm gonna run through everything I have in my, my bag. Um, I'm gonna run through all the soft plastics I use. Um, I should probably uh, systematically set this up. So I'm just gonna, as we're talking here, I'm just gonna, start trying to take the stuff off my desk a little bit so I can set them out. Um, but what I really want to get into is, you know, soft plastics are extraordinarily versatile. Um, I don't care who you are. I don't care, um, you know, where you fish, regardless is, regardless if you're fishing um, on a sandy beach, you're fishing off the rocks, you're fishing in a rip 100 miles out at sea. I don't even know if there's a rip 100 miles but you know what I'm saying? Like you can fish soft plastics anywhere. Um, and they're extraordinarily successful. Soft plastics just flat out catch fish. Um, and I mean, they catch a lot of different species of fish as well. I mean, it's not only a thing that you fish for striped bass with a lot of people. You can catch, use them in fresh water. You can use them in salt water. Um, they're a very versatile plug with both fresh and saltwater fishing and they you because you can pretty much fish them anywhere in, in a variety of ways you can fish them weightless you can fish them with a big heavy four ounce jig head which i actually need to grab right now because it's sitting right behind the camera um sorry for the yeah not been extraordinarily set up but i guess we'll start big right something something just to mess around with I guess I'll just go on both sides of the spectrum here so um, here are, so the I use soft plastics in many different ways I use many different sizes of soft plastics but here we go here's two well pretty much exact same presentations just one is probably three to four inches long and the other one is uh, I, I would assume ten because this is an eight-inch soft plastic, and that's probably two inches of bucktail. Um, with and they're both paddle tails, and one's just a little bit bigger than the other. Um, and you you're probably wondering why are you throwing such a big soft plastic on not even what you I guess what would qualify as a striped bass bucktail. It's more of like a jigging bucktail that you use for other species of uh, fish, but. I love the this type of a bucktail, just the rounded head, just because when you hit this off a rock, the way that head is shaped, it kind of just bounces up instead of getting lodged in the rocks like some of them do. Um, and also this big paddle tail here, this is a four ounce bucktail, but this big soft plastic is gonna give it enough buoyancy that it's not gonna be right in the bottom every single time. It's gonna just cruise over that, you know, if I'm fishing eight foot, uh, like boulder field and the fish are being extremely finicky and they're feeding on big bunker or big um, anything really big a big fish of any sort um, you throw this thing and if you think about it striped bat like I think that people don't give the bass enough credit I think they're feeding on 
bait fish that is way, way, way bigger than we think they are. They're feeding on huge bait fish. Something like this could be considered small for a 40 pound, or even a 30 pound bass. This could be considered a small piece of bait. Um, so that's why, you know, you could fish two different types when I'm in the earliest of early spring. So right now, before I've caught a fish, I'm fishing my little, um, like, I don't even know what paddle. I found this, actually, I found this paddle tail on the beach four years ago, and I just threw it on a little jig head, and I've been using it all spring, and I love it. It's a l tiny little paddle tail. It's super soft, very, uh, um, yeah, it's just super soft plastic, stretchy plastic um, on a, I think this is a half ounce jig head. Um, I think it's a VMC, like half ounce jig head. Um, which you'll see because I just have a packet of them. And they have a super sharp grippy hook. They're not the strongest hook in the world, but I'm, I don't need that because I'm fishing for schoolies. And this is a beautiful little uh, little jig head that I used in the spring in all sorts of scenarios. I've, I've been fishing a lot um, in the back bays and estuaries. And on the estuaries, what I'm looking for are these outflows, little rivers that open up into the bigger estuary river or I guess little creeks that are off of the big estuary river. And what you're looking for on an outgoing tide is, um, cause you really, a good like way to think of it is you wanna fish the warmest water you can in the spring. That's kind of what I try to go for. So you wanna fish in rivers, you wanna fish in estuaries, and you wanna fish on the outgoing tide because that is when all of that water is at its warmest. It's been slowly flowing in all day. It's getting heat heated up by hopefully if it's a nice sunny day it's been heated up by the sun um and it will have warmed up on the muddy bank or flats and then it will start flowing out uh which is also going to flush bait fish out of their little out of the rivers it's going to flush um the bass out a little bit further and they're going to stage up on these little creek mouths that open up into the rivers uh and i you that's a great place to throw anything really, but I love throwing little soft plastics. And that is a scenario that I've talked about before and something that um, I'm gonna talk about a lot about today because I don't really fish soft plastics during the summer. This is one of the few that I will reach for in my bag when it's extraordinarily slow, which it, which hopefully it isn't when I'm fishing in like a money spot around a, a moon phase. Within three days before the new or the full moon, if I'm fishing a big, like I'm fishing big, I'm going big. I, it's what I'm fishing for. I know this is a big beefy hook and I can put some pressure on that and it, won't, and it will probably not bend out. Um, uh, so I'm pretty confident that that's not gonna bend out if I put a good amount of pressure on it. That's why I think these uh, are good. I think they have a nice strong hook and I think it would take a lot to bend this. Um, this is a big soft plastic. It, cr it makes a, it's a big large profile, but it covers a huge amount of bait fish and even Lobster, I mean, this could cover any big paddling. Like, it just makes a big profile in the water. That's why I'm throwing this in the summer. And I'll get back to this a little bit. The only reason I picked this up really is because I wanted to, because um, I was just trying to grab it because it was behind the camera. But I'm going to get back into that. We're going to start early spring, where we are now, before I'm even catching fish. And um, when I'm not catching fish, I guess what I do is I talk about how to catch fish. Uh, so who knows, I might suck because it is May 5th right now. Uh, it's what, Wednesday, May 5th, um, I think. I can, I have no idea the dates. But, um, but that just shows you that uh, the bass are not quite in yet. I've heard reports, I've whispers that there are bass around in the rivers. Um, I've fished a lot of the rivers, believe me. I fished 36 hours this past week. Um, and so far this week, um, it's Wednesday and I've probably fished, I don't know, maybe 10 hours and it's Wednesday. So, um, yeah, that just shows you how much time I've been putting in and getting nothing. Uh, which as I said in the last podcast, um, I, I'm not magical. I, I have spent, I'm not also, I, I'm not a fantastic early spring fishing like we're trying to get on the first schoolies of the season i'm not very good at that i'm re i and i think it's because i've focused so like my mind and my mindset for fishing is so strictly on how to catch the biggest fish in my area and less on how to catch as much fish in my area as possible uh and a lot of those go hand in hand it's a little bit tough when there's no fish around uh which is what i've been dealing with but i've been able to consistently pull some of the larger fish 
as early as I can in the spring. So I, I do pretty well early spring as far as large fish go. So that, so on Cape Ann, late May is when we'll get bass up to maybe 25 pounds. Uh, and by late May, I mean maybe the last week of May and the first two weeks of J June are going to be the time where you can get the bass that are probably 20, 25 pounds. And then by the second week of June, you're seeing fish that are easily the biggest fish we'll see all season. So you have that, that's like around the time that the biggest fish show up for us. Now I know in New York and New Jersey, uh, and all of Long Island, they've been seeing big fish since March pretty much. Uh, and it's funny because this year was supposed to be so much further ahead of last year. Uh, and I caught my first fish May 4th last year. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think that it's, um, I think it's pretty interesting how for everywhere else, I would say everywhere else, I would say up to probably Cape Cod, I would say it was early and I think it was consistently dropping back a week, um, because the weather got really bad for like two weeks ago or a week ago. Uh, they seem to have shown up on the Cape and then just stopped. Uh, granted, there's been a lot of bait around, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I'll also talk about why soft plastics are kind of my go-to right now because of the bait that I have in my area. Um, and, yeah, I guess I can get right into that. So I've been fishing very small. Um, I've been have I've been forced to fish very small, so I would say I think it was probably April twenty seventh or twenty eighth. Um, there was a huge push of rain bait that just showed up on Cape Ann, like ridiculous amount of rain bait. Um, I've never seen this, uh, and I've fished Cape Ann hard now and paid it very close to attention, very close attention to what bait is in my area. And um, I've never seen this amount of rain bait or really seen that amount of rain bait ever on Cape Ann, to my knowledge. And it's because, and maybe not ever, but like especially in the spring. Um, and I do know that they show up with like, they're around. Uh, I've seen them, but you don't see it to this extent that you see it right now. I've never seen it to this extent. I'm talking about acres of bait and hundreds and thousands of seagulls eating this bait. Um, and it can't be good for my fit for me catching fish. Uh, and I talked a little bit about this last podcast too. Um, I did, I fished one night in this back bay. It was off of a, um, it was off of a harbor. Um, and I, it was like the sound, I guess, but yeah. So it was like, I fished on this back bay off of this harbor. Um, and I was catching air. I wasn't catching anything, but I saw when I initially got right up onto the, the beach and started walking across the beach, it was a very calm night and there's a lot of fish roll, like finning and rolling on the surface. Like there's a lot of action on the surface of the water and I was like, okay, this is real. They're, they're bass here now. Like I was like, yes, there's bass now. And then I realized, no, the, they're not bass. They're probably Pollock. Uh, and in this area in area like in that area I guess within that town and off the rocks of that town um, I've caught many pollock I've caught pollock up to probably 36 inches there um, which is crazy uh, like if you've ever if you know what a pollock is um, it, it's a, a pretty crazy looking fish um, and they 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 just they're very interesting they show up when the water's really cold um, and I think they stay already all year round but they're just out pretty deep in the water um and they're very aggressive fish and they they feed on the surface i've had them hit top water plugs um they love eating soft plastics but whatever they were whether they be pollock i don't think they're mackerel but it could have been mackerel uh there was a lot of them around feeding on the surface i'm almost 100 percent sure it wasn't bass could have there been bass mixed in maybe maybe because and the reason i'm saying maybe is um i've had extremely good uh, conditions in a very similar spot, if not the exact same spot in the past week or two weeks, and I've not hooked into a bass. Um, and I thoroughly believe that if there were bass around, I would have hooked into them and I didn't. So, um, I was, but regardless of the fact that I, that the bass were there or not, if, even if the bass are there, 
what are you going to be focusing on? Now, everything else goes out the window early season. If you're thinking about, okay, I want to target where there are concentrations of large bait. That's what I love doing. Hence having big paddle tails around, which I'll throw in a little bit later when there are like something that big I'm going to be throwing in late May. Um, but right now there's a, there would be herring. I mean, there are herring and I've been estuaries too and seen a lot of rippling on the surface and there's been a lot of like there's a lot of fish around right now and i know the bass are within days of being here within days and i keep saying oh i hope they're gonna be here by the end of the week but i've been saying that now for three weeks now and i've not seen anything so it's kind of it's kind of frustrating because when you hear all these reports of everybody from i was hearing reports of people in connecticut the first week of march catching bass with sea ice and then i'm over here uh, and then I hear people in Rhode Island starting to catch fish early, like still in March almost, or maybe it was April, I forget. And then definitely by like, it kind of slowed down for a little bit when they kind of were around that Rhode Island, Cape Cod, or Rhode Island slash the islands off of um, Cape Cod. And then you got the report of there being bass on Cape Cod, like the, the islands on Cape Cod, and then bass on the south side of Cape Cod. And then they just sat for a long time. So... Uh, and that's just what I heard and whatever. So the bait fish, regardless, it's been, it's been weird. It's been crazy. The bait fish have been amazing. I mean, the amount of sheer numbers of bait, regardless of the size. I mean, I'm talking a lot about rain bait, which believe me, there's a lot of rain bait, but there's an equal amount of, um, of herring around. I've seen a lot of herring, especially in the, the rivers. I actually have not seen herring in concentrated schools going to spawn which is kind of interesting and i've been looking a lot for that um i've been going around driving around and i'm sure there's places that are in cape ann you can see concentrations of herring and if you know where one of those are and that the, the fish are running right now please comment below because i'd love to go hang, just go look at the herring go see them uh moving around and whatever just because i like to go see what the bait fish looks like and how they uh, interact with stuff uh and something like this you know, this kind of has the little flashy herring looking, like, looks a little bit like a herring. And I have a weightless one of these in my bag, which is something that I definitely will be throwing early season. Um, but I've been really, and that's like, if I'm in my mind before I knew that there's a lot of bait fish around, that's what I'm targeting. I want to mimic large bait fish. That's what I'm going for. And that's kind of what I was trying to get at is when I'm thinking about, Early spring fishing, I'm thinking about how can I t like fish where there are large bait fish around. So what's in my bag? I'm talking about I want to be throwing big swim bait, swim bait. I want to be throwing big um, soft plastics. Um, I think this is a hoagie, uh, just a weightless hoagie with a big hook on it. Um, so I have a lot of that around. Uh, and then kind of going in the opposite direction, an owl gag. Uh, I don't know how big, I mean, it's a little owl gag. Um, and this is stuff that will mimic herring in particular. <sighs> um, another one that I found on the beach. Um, I found this guy on the beach. Uh, so yeah, just a big heavy jig head and a little, uh, like I would say definitely mimicking herring. But big beefy hook, whoever was fishing with this knew what they were doing. Um, and they, a big beefy hook and a little swim bait, like uh, soft plastic on the end. But again, it's a little bit, it's weighted, but mimicking herring. Um, what else do I have in here that it's going to be more herring oriented? Um, yeah, here we go. I'm trying to just do this more systematically here another a weightless sluggo with the two hooks on it this is a fan favorite right here for spring in the rivers um really okay so i'm gonna stop it right here those are my plugs that and i guess i can grab the weightless one too right is that the one we want i didn't even know if i threw it in here or not maybe i didn't i didn't throw it in here not quite yet but oh actually i'm oh well, yeah i guess i'm missing one right here uh, I do have other, I pat, I guess I'm just going to bring them all out. Whatever, screw it. We're doing it on the fly. I don't really know what I'm thinking here, but this is what I'm thinking. Um, 
little uh, tsunami swim shads with the paddle tails. These things kill it in the spring. Uh, off the rocks, in the back bays, and the estuaries. These things, if I, I like, I love these for spring fishing. Um, I have some more stuff in here, but the last one that I really want to talk about before I, I'm, I'm, I guess, set this down, but uh, just a little, it's just a jig head with a really slender, thin profile, extremely sensitive, thin, soft plastic. Um, this right here is very, very sneaky at night, especially early spring for huge, huge fish. Now, when they're big fish around, you throw this really sensitive, really, really sensitive. And I'm talking, when I talk about early spring, I'm talking about as soon as you catch fish. Now, people are always like, oh, there's bass between 12 and 20, like 12 and like 15 inches and maybe 20 inches if you stretch it. That is BS. That is the biomass of fish. But there are bass from the time there are bass that are easily 35 to probably 40 inches around. So, it's very difficult to catch those fish. It's it just always is because there's not huge numbers of them around. Something like this at night, you crawl you crawl this in a river. You know, there's current, so I mean it's a little bit heavy. This is probably an ounce, maybe an ounce and a, a quarter or something. And this is so sensitive that any any like movement of your rod or of the water is gonna make this thing move like crazy. A little snake action, very mimics an eel like crazy i have a story about you know before i forget this i'm gonna side sidebar this um a little bit here i was walking back um and in a tide pool i saw a piece of kelp that was probably four inches long and it was moving like on the rock just like this and i thought it was just moving in the current of like the, the water just flowing around in there and then all of a sudden it starts swimming and there's a little eel that's four inches long and it had a very flat head I'd say it looked very similar to like a moray eel's head. It was tiny though. It was like four inches and it was in the tide pool and looking exactly like kelp. Who knows? Like I haven't looked it up and I don't know how common that eel is. But if you know what that eel is, give me a comment below. It was about four inches long. It was probably the width of the tail of this soft plastic. So I'd say about a quarter of an inch. But like it was probably literally looked like maybe that much of the soft plastic, probably three inches of this soft plastic here if you're watching the podcast. It probably was about that long to where my fingers are. Um, and it was, I don't know, it just looked it looked the same color as kelp. Um, and it was pretty interesting. You know, I saw it, I, I thought it was, I literally thought it was a piece of kelp just stuck on the rock, just moving in the current, and then it started swimming. Uh, I tried to grab it, but it went into a rock really quickly. So I couldn't, I didn't end up actually grabbing it because I was, I was, I was like, very uh, interested in actually seeing what that was. Uh, if I caught it, I was gonna take a picture and put it on Instagram and ask everybody what it was, but I've never seen that before. Okay, so let's get back to why you wanna fish, um, why you wanna fish stuff that looks like a herring in the spring. And the reason for that is, is I guess, where, where are you fishing in the spring mostly? Mostly you're fishing um, in the in like the rivers and estuaries, uh, maybe off the rocks. But a lot of the time, if I'm fishing off the rocks, which you do see me do a decent amount in the spring, it's mostly for ease. It's mostly because I live closest to rocks that I feel confident fishing. But um, I love fishing um like i love fishing where there's bait like that's like my first thing that i go for and if i can fish off the rocks near a estuary where i know that there's gonna be herring moving in and out especially in the spring i'm gonna fish there because that's what the bait is gonna be that's what the biggest fish are gonna be there doing feeding on and in the spring bass are i wouldn't say spooky but they can be hard to persuade to eat your your bait um that's just how it goes um in the spring they can be finicky they can uh turn up they they can pass up a lot of stuff so when you're fishing in the spring you want to fish stuff that is i guess non-threatening to them and the thing about soft plastics is they're probably the closest we have to actually fishing a live 
bait, a live piece of bait. Any little action that you implement to this, you know, I'm literally just touching it, touching the soft plastic a little bit. It gives it action. Any little subtle movement is gonna give the soft plastic action. And what that does is when you're when you're a fish and you're swimming through the water, you you don't like it's not this crazy action here. You dart around when you're distraught, but you also when you're not distraught, you move very slight very slightly and with little movements through the water just to move yourself along in the water. And the thing I love about soft plastics is they have that, what I would say, that weightless fish like floating in the water column. Same thing a bucktail has, like element to them. Yeah, there's a lot of other lures, but a lot of the time you have plugs, you can either reel them, dig the lip into the, the current or into the water just to get it to work. Uh, and then when you stop it, it kind of just floats up or it sinks or whatever. But for this, you can jerk it and you give it all this crazy action and then you can stop it and it's just gonna slowly float in the water column and the bass are gonna crush it. Cause that like injured bait fish twitching, like if you've ever live land a bunker for instance and it's getting distraught, it goes up on the surface and it's like sideways and then it just flutters around a little bit and it l flutters around a little bit. That's a lot like, that's what a soft plastic looks like when you're pulling it. You can work it really quick across the surface of the water and make it look almost identical to that. And you can work it as a top water plug. You can work it just subsurface, which is what, I, this is more like a foot under the surface and you're doing a lot of jerks and a lot of cranks. You can reel this straight dead in, straight at night, like literally dead straight at night. And what we'll do is it'll have a little subtle action to it, but just the profile and what the bass will actually see and what the bass see with all of their senses and everything is this is a bait fish cruising along the surface of the water. I need to whack this. Uh, even though it might not have all this crazy action, sometimes they don't really want that in the spring. I know people that, and I personally, will have like super strike darter, for instance. When I would fish a super strike darter in the spring, I cast it out there and I reel it in with no current. Like I'm talking about when there's no current. Yeah, it does have some motion to it, but sometimes it's just reeling dead straight through the water and the bass hit it. And it's interesting that sometimes they want not a lot of action in the spring. Um, that's where the soft plastic comes in. You can, it's a very interesting, very realistic moving uh, bait. Whether it has a paddle tail, whether it be just straight flat, um, like, whatever it has like the different tails to these to these things um you know there's paddle tails there's the forked tailed ones i don't there's probably technical names for this that i should know but whatever um and you know they all have different like looking tails and stuff but what happens is they all are very realistic looking to the fish when they're in the water they're extremely realistic looking to the fish when the fish is looking to feed uh, and it sees the super realist and well, I guess not even when the fish is looking to feed, but if the fish is hanging out in the spring, it doesn't want to expend a lot of energy in this cool water because it, you know, it needs to, uh, reserve its energy, uh, for the, for the short bursts of speed that it's going to do to actually hit a prey because it's cold and they're not able, I don't like they're having a hard time generating a lot of energy and whatever. Um, you throw this thing in the water. It's slowly cruising. You jerk it, you make it go crazy, but it's still, then you let it float and it's floating along. They can't, met, they cannot pass this up. So then they go and they smash it on the surface. And that's why I think these catch the biggest fish in your area. Soft plastics just do in the spring. The other, the only other plug that I'd say does that early in the spring are Danny plugs. Danny plugs are killer early spring plugs. Other than that, I'm even when I'm, I'm talking about like the larger profiles, I do like the three large profile plugs that I like to fish in the spring are big spook style plugs, um, Danny plugs, and then large soft plastics. Now I do have bucktails and I guess I'm gonna throw bucktails into this, but I do think that, you know, throwing, you know, something like this that has extremely slender, very, very crazy action to it. It's very, um, I'm trying to find the word for this, but 
uh, I guess, I'm trying to like find the best word for this, but it's a very soft, soft plastic, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's not as stiff of a soft plastic as like the hoagie here um, is. Like this is a stiffer soft plastic versus the plastic that's used on this. It's more supple. Uh, and what happens is this right here uh, gives the action that of like an eel. And when you put this in current, I've seen this firsthand multiple times. You're fishing a paddle tail. You're fishing another type of soft whatever. And you're not getting a bite. Um, regardless of the plug, I fish Danny plugs too. And you're in the current. You're slowly working your Danny plug. You're not catching that. You switch to a soft plastic with the paddle tail. You're slowly working that. And then you bring this thing out. And then you throw this in the current. And you don't move it. And it just sits there in the current. And it just snakes along in the current looking like an eel. And then all of a sudden, you catch a fish. And not only that, you catch a decent sized, like 30 inch bass really early in the spring at night. And you're like, wow, this is the plug that I should have been throwing all day. And because not only that, that you catch that one, you end up catching them back to back to back. And time and time again, this is the thing that does it. It's a suit. I actually think this is a bucktail teaser. I'm, I think this is supposed to be put on your bucktails, your big bucktails is like a bucktail soft plastic teaser. This is a snaky little thing. I love this. It looks it looks like an eel in the water. You cast this out, you reel it straight. It has the eely motion in the in it. And the reason and this is the funniest one because you know these other ones are pretty well known for catching fish and some of them even very large fish. I mean, I have a lot of sluggos. I'm going to get into the sluggos in a second. I'm also going to get into color for soft plastics. Um, I've never fished black uh, as well for soft plastics. I try to go just natural and white. I don't know why I've never fished black. I just I, again, I don't fish, and this is the thing, like, I, I kid you not, I had, I think, four, maybe five people DM me after I did that post on Instagram saying that I need to do a pod, like, I need to do a podcast about soft plastics, and then I had probably 15 other people ask me why I didn't put soft plastics in that initial video of what's in my plug bag, like, spring plug bag when I was running through it. Um, it was just because I don't like fishing this, but I do have a, a knowledge of this and I know these things work. And so most of the time when I'm throwing soft plastics, it's not going to be the first thing out of my bag. Um, and in this, it's not going to be the, I hope it's not the first thing out of my bag. I'd much rather stick to throwing a, like a topwater plug, spook, a pencil, um, needle fit, needle fish. Well, I guess, I mean, needle fish are pretty good spring plugs, but spook, pencil, um, Danny plugs, uh, like uh, some sort of a swimming, small swimmer, uh, even like, and then, and then I'm going to more of a paddle like this. Then I'm going to more of like one of those, um, like, oh my gosh, this is like a tsunami swim shad. Uh, and this is the perfect size. I mean, I actually like the smallest, like go as small as you can in the spring because this thing right here, I can tell you, I threw this probably every single day from May to June, to from well, not June, but probably from like May 4th to probably May 20th every single day. And then I switched off from, then I never threw this again all season long, including the fall. And the only reason I threw this plug is because I get, catch fish on the spring. Did I throw soft plastic after really the springtime last year? No, I don't think I, I honestly don't think I threw a single saw besides like when the water was, when I was like trying to do an, a niche thing, like I needed an extremely heavy plug to throw in big current or big waves. Yeah. I didn't throw saw plastic at all. Uh, it's just cause they work so well in the spring. They work well in, in the fall as well, but I just think there's other plugs that work better in the fall. I think that they're very specific to spring for me at least. Cause I think that during the springtime, the bass are going to be very, uh, they're very picky in what they're actually choosing to spend their energy on. And a lot of the time you have to actually, you have to get, get out of your like, this is what I want to catch a fish with zone. Because sometimes that's not what the fish want to actually eat. It's just what you want to throw. Um, and I have a big problem with that because I like to throw what I, what I like to throw. Like I, I, I want to fish my... I want to fish topwater plugs. I want to fish a Danny plug. I'd m much rather fish a Danny or even a subsurface metal lip than a uh, soft plastic because you have to reel soft plastics all slow and it's not as interactive. You all, you jerk it a little bit here and there. Maybe you twitch it, um, but it's just not as fun for me. I'll even throw like a swimmer, like a little SP minnow like thing. Then I'll throw a, 
um, soft plastic or before I'll throw a soft plastic. Now, believe me, with the bait that we've had this spring, it has been the first and the only thing that I've thrown all day. And I'm going to get into that right now because the only thing that I'm throwing in a wrench that's thrown a wrench in anything this spring, it's actually been a few things, but the weather, number one, and the bait is number two. The bait fish have been so frustrating because there's been so much bait around that even if there are a small select few of fish around, they're not going to be eating my stuff, my offerings, because I need to offer something that is so, like, so specific that the bass are not even, they're not even messing with me. Um, yeah, and when I mean they're not even messing with me, they're literally not, like, I haven't gotten a touch, I haven't even seen a swirl behind any of my plugs, nothing. Now, let's get into what I've actually been throwing this spring because I've been forced to throw. Um, and forced in a neg as negative a way as you can say. Um, it's not what I want to throw. It's not the profile that is e easiest to throw by any stretch of the imagination. And it's not the funnest thing to throw either. Um, and there, it's just, it sucks. It really, really sucks because... Um, the bass are so darn finicky that, yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. I have them out right now. These are all sluggos, and I'd say it's the only other thing I've thrown. These three, these five plugs, <laughs> these five plugs have been the only plugs these five soft plastics are the only soft plastics i've been throwing because the bait fish that they've been feeding on is so ridiculously specific and hard to catch fish when they're on and that is rain bait and if any of you have ever fished when the bass are keyed in on rain bait you know how frustrating it can be now i'm talking about you can have a 50 pound you can have multiple 50 pound bass blitzing on these in feet of water and then you and they won't eat anything that you throw at them. And when I mean they won't eat anything, I mean they will not touch anything you throw at them. And it's so like, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating when that happens. And but there is one specific bait fish that or once in there are specific plugs that mimic them. And the ones that I, at least I have that mimic them are these. I guess I do have the smaller jig head. And you could almost throw some of these soft plastics as, um, you could throw some of these soft plastics on a fly rod. They're that small. Um, I have one, I have a six inch sluggo. So that's one of them. But then I have a four inch sluggo and alewife. Four inch sluggo and alewife. This is what I've been having to deal with. That's as small as I've been going. Actually, the the other one's three inches, but I'll show you here what I've had to do. Um, here we go. Um, oh, come on. Okay, so the the problem that I've had is as follows. Uh, I'm just laying them out so I can do it size wise. Um, how big is the bait that I've been having to fish? I'm talking about looks identical to this in size and in profile and literally identical. Do you know how small a four inch sluggo is? Do you see this? You see how small this is? This is tiny. This is absolutely minuscule. This is not what I like fishing. Now, the reason I can't, not that I like, this is, I hate fishing this. This is the worst. I could literally throw this on my 10 weight fly rod perfectly fine. I had to, I made a jig head and I could throw this on my, my 10 weight fly rod, no problem. That's how small this is. It's so small and it's so thin and that's how big the bait fish are. You throw this, in a school of where there are 40, 50 pound bass blitzing on little rain bait, this is the only thing that will ever get eaten. And um, it's been so frustrating because you see all these birds diving in the water all day long 
and you see fish swirling on the surface uh, at night. And I can't tell you, like, I couldn't tell you if there's bass in it because, number one, it's so early spring that there's not going to be 50-pound bass feeding on this stuff. It's going to be 15 to 20-inch fish and maybe the odd 30-inch fish mixed in with that. Now, there, I did see some bigger swirls. I did see some small little swirls. I don't know what they were, though, because, again, this is pitch blackout. It's a new moon, though, so it was a little bit better. I could actually see into the water because the moon was so bright. But the profiles that I've had, they are so small, I'm having to use, like, like three quarter ounce jig heads and um i i'm fishing with 30 like my leader's 30 pound fluorocarbon to 50 pound braid on a rod that can throw up to six ounces you know it's a light has a very light rod like granted the tip of this the i'm using a century stealth uh and it's a 10 foot six i believe and it's rated from like i think it's re ra rated from like two to to six ounces or three to six ounces or something like that um or maybe even more i don't know but it's a it's a it says it's a beefy rod i'm kind of a little bit sketched out about throwing heavy heavy stuff on it but it's a light rod it's going to be good for eeling it's going to be good for it's great for throwing like spooks it's not as great for pencil popping uh but it's great for throwing soft plastic slash bucktails because it's such a sensitive rod um, and the sensitivity to the rod helps so much when you're fishing with soft plastics, but the casting, oh my gosh, you can't cast this more than 10 feet. And that's where I'm getting struggling because not that I can cast any more than 10 feet. I can probably cast it maybe 20, 20 feet. I'd say 20 yards, whatever. I can probably cast it 20 yards, like max cast distance with, uh, one of these, one of these. Now this, I, I haven't even thrown this. It's too light. I'm the only reason I have this in my bag is probably to throw on the fly rod and I think that's cheating in the fly world but um yeah that's like the only way I would end up throwing something this small the profile is ridiculously small and then and when the bass are in if the bass are they could already be in uh you it's so hard to catch a fish under those when there's that much bait in the water and I'm talking about I threw my 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 sunglasses on and I'm looking into the water and you see clouds of this bait with all these birds diving on it and i'm like there's no way in hell that i'm gonna be able to catch a bass out of this um even if i'm throwing the exact same profile and length of these fish and i actually grabbed one out of the water on the surface one of the bigger ones and it was probably and i have these in different colors but it was probably about that big like a sluggo like a decent size sluggo um and i have them up to the six inch size um and this is like you know this is a bigger size sluggo for like the bait um and you'll even i mean i'll throw these weightless um i need to get some uh just belly weighted hooks i like to throw the um i think it's the owner beast hooks they're great on sluggos um those are the ones that i like using um i think there's other ones that like i think there's like sluggo branded ones maybe i don't know i forget but i i use like some weighted like a few uh ounce or like a like half ounce to an ounce like weighted belly weighted jig uh like a swim bait hook and they're great for soft plastics but i'm going to run you through quick the colors the shape the s shapes and the sizes of soft plastics that i've been forced to throw every single time i've been fishing this spring besides maybe when i was in the, the back bay rivers and i saw some herring around i was throwing some a little bit bigger soft plastics slash like i've been throwing a few spooks around i've been throwing a few dannies around a few swimming plugs. I guess I've been literally throwing everything, but uh, I have. If I'm not fishing in the the like way back bay estuary areas, even in the back bays, I'm seeing this bait. The bait's everywhere. Back bays, ocean, beaches, whatever, rocks. There's it's ridiculous. Um, but we start out with again our little soft plastic paddle tail. I'm gonna say this is about three inches now that I'm seeing this four inch sluggo. This is about three inch little soft plastic paddle tail this is the same size not the same profile thickness and width wise of the bait that they're feeding on but it is still kind of the same profile length and hopefully this would catch a fish i have a lot of confidence in this because it's such a subtle presentation that if there was even a school like any type of a schoolie around feeding on any type of a bait fish i don't care if it's a little tiny uh, rain bait all the way up to a bunker um or crab or whatever 
they would eat this. Um, but then, uh, past that, then I'm throwing the not even uh, – like I don't even know what weighted jig head, um, which I actually think it's a fly jig head on a little fly hook. I'm literally using a fly hook on because I didn't have anything small enough onto a uh, the four-inch sluggo uh, in ale life. And this is tiny. This is so small. It's awful to fish. I hate it. Um, and then I have, again, probably the – like half ounce to maybe a three quarter ounce. I don't know how heavy this is, but um, again on the th the four inch sluggo um, in the alewife, uh, just a little bit heavier. But this is like what I've been throwing and been like forced to throw. And I do jigs with like I'll cast out there, let this sink, and then I jig it up and let it sink, jig it up, let it sink. Uh, otherwise, I can't throw it because what like I don't have a rod to throw this on. You'd have to literally throw a bass rod with 15 pound test on, and you can't get away with that with a bass. I don't care how big the fish is. That's gonna be a hard like. And really, if even you have to be fishing either on a sand beach or you have to have a very clean estuary to be able to land something with 15 pounds. I guess you can't. I'm gonna get trashed because I know there's people that can catch like 40 pound bass on eight pound line. So whatever, but I'm just saying. Um, then I have a little bit bigger sluggo. Uh, I'm assuming this is probably a six, maybe a little less than six inches. Maybe this is a five inch sluggo um, on a, uh, just a normal, just hook. Um, and this is good. You know, this should, th again, weightless. So this is gonna be more like right on the surface, just jerk, jerk, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. And what's that's gonna do is this kind of twitch across the surface and it's gonna go all over the place and then it's gonna like glide across the surface and then when it glides, the bass are gonna whack it. Uh, and that's what makes it work so well. Um, then I have one with a little like quarter ounce jig head and this again, like a five inch soft plastic and white. Uh, this is not very heavy. So again, this is gonna be right at the surface. It just helps me with the casting distance even a little bit. Um, and I've been throwing that a lot. Um, very sharp hook. Actually, again, I made this, and I, I think it's for a uh, fly rod, and I'm, like, poking myself and hurting. It's, so, it's like, the sharpest hook in the world. It's ridiculous how sharp this hook is. Um, so, yeah, and then I have the, again, the bigger sluggo here, the 8-inch or whatever. So, I've been, that's what I've been forced to fish with, um, and I hate fishing this, like, this is the worst. It's literally the worst to fish this way. Th this stuff is so small. It is so hard profile wise to fish. Um, it's very hard to match that profile. And um, I've had, I, I know other guys that I literally have been DMing back and forth with for hours saying that the rain bait is killing them. Uh, and I agree because this rain bait is the, the worst. It's honestly the worst, especially for spring. Um, and again, I still haven't caught a fish yet, and it's a few days after my, it's a few days after I, like, what, like I caught a fish um, last year, the, my first fish of the season, so I'm kind of pissed. Um, I'm going to catch a fish uh, on the new moon, I think it's Friday, is Friday tomorrow though? Yeah, wait, no, it's Wednesday, sorry. Um, the new moon or the new moon, the full moon is on Friday, I do believe. And, um, yeah, so the, the, the hope is we have a shot at catching a fish on, on Cape Ann. I think the biomass will start pulling up around in the blitzing on this rain bait. Quote me now for you guys that are on Cape Ann. If the rain bait sticks around with this northern wind um, blowing it away, uh, which I've seen probably 50% of the bait get pushed off shore right now. Um, and so if it sticks around until the, the biomass shows up, oof, the blitzing is going to be interesting. It's going to be ridiculous. And it's going to be frustrating because they're going to see acres of schoolies eating rain bait and we're not going to be able to get a single fish here. Uh, other than me, because I have this four inch sluggos here that are the exact profile and I'm going to throw this on my, I swear to God, I'm going to throw this on my fly rod and I'm going to throw this little soft plastic on my fly rod and all you like fly, fly fishing purists are going to scream and yell. Uh, but I'm going to be catching 
all of the schoolies in the spring on that. Um, and it's going to be amazing because the bass are, they're almost here. And I just keep, I keep having to tell myself that the bass are almost here. Chill. And cause I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm such a, I feel like I'm failing so bad right now because, uh, I've been, I've fished hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. And I'm sure I've not fished the most in hours wise as some of you. And I'm sure that I've also, I mean, but I'm, I would be, I'd be surprised if somebody has fished as many hours of, as me this week or this past week, I guess, and have not caught a single fish because the amount of hours that I've put in is ridiculous. Um, and you have to literally not be in a place where there are fish to not catch a fish with the amount of hours that I fished. And I feel like I know kind of what I'm doing here. Um, I have a podcast talking about it, so I hope I know what I'm doing here, uh, which is annoying when you, you can't catch fish to show show what you're trying to articulate. But this is how I'm going to fish in the spring when the bass are in. I guarantee you I'm going to be catching the, the biggest ones in the area. But the bass just have to get here first. I guess I'm so like keyed in on fishing off the rocks, like I, I have to go back to my home. My home is fishing off the rocks of Cape Ann. I, I feel so comfortable fishing there that I'll fish there early, early spring and I'll be comfortable fishing there. Um, and I'll know that if the best are in the area, I will catch them. And I b believe me when I say the bass are there, like if the bass are in the estuaries, like they'll be off the rocks of Cape Ann within a day or two that they're in the estuaries. So it's not like, oh, they're in the estuaries and they're not off the rocks. If they're in the estuaries, they're going to be on the rocks within a matter of hours. So let's get back to my bigger plastics moving into late spring. Late spring is an interesting time for me because this is when I start, things start processing my mind. I'm like, okay, it's grind time. Um, this is now like, okay, I got, I, I, Everything that I wanted to try and test out is why there are schoolies in the spring and not 40 pounders in the spring, early, early spring. And the reason I'm saying that is I, the springtime is the time to test, to test what you want to throw, to test how your tackle is, uh, and to learn. And yeah, the, at, there's a certain extent of that that you need to do by catching big fish and having a large fish pull on the end of your line and knowing everything's going to hold and everything's going to work fine. But um, at the same time, to that extent, you've already tested what plugs you're going to be throwing, how things have been working, what baits in the area, uh, how your rod, how your reel, how your line is. Speaking of which, I need to get a new spool of line. I'm, and I've had contemplations between going down to 40 on my VSX 200. And the reason I'm saying that is my contemplations are oh, I have my I have 80 on the the. 275 um and uh i maybe want to throw 40 on the the other one but i kind of i can't go under 50 i really can't for how i fish but that's neither here nor there right now so back to this i'm in the spring i'm like okay this and this is the funniest time of the year because this is when i honestly think you have the best shot at catching the 50 pounder of the season is right now springtime you get you get chances throughout like you get little pockets of fish throughout the year in different places and they start showing up in the estuaries earlier and then off the rocks and then off the well really goes what i would like to say estuaries river mouths and then kind of sandy beach rock areas or it goes more like sandy beach and then late summer you get them on the like the sandy beaches get a little bit hot and then you go off the the rocks where it's a little bit cooler and the water's a little bit cleaner because it's been getting filtered through all the seaweed and stuff in the rocks and that's where the bigger fish are going to be staged from then and pretty much until the, the, the rest of the year that's where you're going to be catching your biggest fish is off the rocks but um I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm in my, my zone here. I'm like, I know that I have a, a shot to catch the biggest fish of the season right now, but it's always slow. Now, this is the hardest time of the year to catch a, a catch like a 40 pound fish 
not an eel. If I'm not like if I couldn't fish eels, like I went to the tackle store and they're out of eels. I went to another tackle store, they're also out of eels. So I have no eels. What do I throw next? That's kind of where I'm at here, where I'm like, okay, I'm normally gonna be throwing my plugs that I will throw. Even if I am eeling, I do generally try to throw plugs first, you know, see if the fish are around, maybe hook the bigger fish on the eel, on the um, plug, and then I'll switch over to eels if things are struggling. And most of the time in early, early spring, stuff starts to struggle. So what do I do? What do I switch to first? That's where I like to say, I mean, that's where I like to do big hoagie here with a nice beefy, I mean, this is the hook that's in it right here. Just a big VMC J hook here. I think it's like size seven or eight, maybe six. I don't know, but it's, it's a nice size J hook. I even think this is a little bit, a little bit light. Um, I think that for that type of the time of the season, again, it's probably fine. I mean, I'd have to put a good amount of pressure to bend this, but um, this is what I'm going to be throwing early, uh, in my, the plugs, this is the weightless version. So if the water is not super crazy with, um, cur with current, I guess, and, or super crazy with, um, with like big waves and everything, uh, I'm going to be throwing this thing. Um, I'm going to be throwing this thing out there and I'm going to be twitching it across the surface, twitch, twitch, pause. Let that thing float and wiggle and swim on the surface. Twitch, twitch, pause. Reel maybe a few cranks. Twitch, twitch, pause. Reel a few cranks. Twit you get the point. So, um, and what will happen is hopefully you get that big 30, 40 pound bass in the area. If you don't have access to eels, come up and inhale this. Because again, this looks similar profile and shape to an eel. So, you know, if they're out there and they're eel eating bass, this is what I'm going to be throwing first. Very closely followed by, okay, if there are huge bait in the area, I'm talking about giant bunker, giant um, alewife. Uh, what am I going to be throwing early? Current, like you have big current, you have um, big waves. You throw this thing out there, it's heavy. This thing is going to cast for you. Now, it's gonna also sit right in that current and you're, you're gonna have to reel this faster than you'd like if it's shallow, but if it's not that shallow, you can reel this, you can get it down into the rocks, this big paddle tail and soft plastic will hopefully keep this just out of the rocks enough and, or what I do is I go weightless, just big swim bait hook in it um, and you throw this with a big swim bait hook on it. Um, or just with a big belly weighted swim like swim bait hook on it, and this is what I'm throwing. Big, 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 big profile. Again, technically I would say not that big, but as far as we as far as like plugs go, this is a bigger profile, and one of the biggest profiles. Um, huge, like this is big. It's big. It's eight inches plus the ten inch. It's like a ten inch bait. That's a that's decent sized. I do have stuff that's pretty large. I fish with flies that are almost 15 inches long. I fish with big d triple double jointed like swimmers here that are also probably 15 inches. But this for soft plastics and weight wise, I would definitely qualify this as a big heavy plug. Now, um, if I'm moving into the, if it, now, now we're gonna go a little bit semi earlier. So if we're saying like that was late spring, early summer kind of time, late spring early summer kind of time this is this like i think this is a hoagie not hoagie i think this is a sluggo but like it's the double hooked sluggo um this is doesn't have as strong hooks but um the it's a, a very uh actually i can look yeah it's a sluggo um it's a very again very, has that like sluggo very slender very uh you know what i'm saying has a lot of action in it and if you throw this in a river where there's not a lot of current not a lot of action not a lot of wave action or on a sandy beach early in the rip like you can let this just drift through a rip or something that could be your plug early season early like later summer time frame um and that's when you start catching fish and i did talk a little bit about colors i try to go natural with a lot of my stuff if i know what baits in the area i try to go natural with it but if I don't think that, 
but other than that, like I, I stick with white and I've never fished black and I know a lot of guys like black and swear by it. So, um, that's something that you guys can like try out for yourselves. I don't fish them very much. And it's so funny that I got like so many likes and comments and questions and, um, conversations all about this one post that I didn't really think twice about. Um, and it was just, it was one of those funny things. Because I know that for a lot of people, soft plastics are a huge part of their repertoire as far as, um, as far as like, just like in general, like they fish mostly soft plastic plugs, which I've, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's how you feel confident about fishing, that's, that's all you, but um, there, I guarantee you that there are 90% are of the time besides the spring, there are other plugs that will outfish your soft plastic. Now, that being said, I've had nights where they'll only eat the soft plastic and that's it, no matter the time of year too, like summertime. I always have something like this in my pocket, in my bag, something like these. These two are kind of my go-to in the spring. They're so like... They just have so much action and life to them that when you throw them in the summer and the bass are being super finicky, this is like, this is what they want. Um, and I need to throw up more. But as I said, I don't think I threw a single soft plastic last year when there were times now that I think back to it, I had nights where it was super slow for most of the night when I'm throwing, I was throwing plugs and I ended up catching a few schoolies and was like, yeah, this is not worth it sticking out here very long because the action isn't very like on and so I just bailed and I was like huh maybe if I had a nice slender very good action soft plastic in my bag I would catch fish and then when I started to really kind of throw some bigger and I again, again the thing is like okay do I buy a pack of soft plastics for ten dollars and hooks and whatever or do I buy a plug for 10 bucks you know that's kind of where you got to weigh your options here and most of the time I opt for getting a plug than getting a um, getting a soft plastic that you can't you do you burn through them, but in the springtime, you know I don't use soft plastics a lot. I those packets of uh, sluggos that I have will last me two three years. I like I'll use like here's the thing realistically, um, I will very rarely use this, but I'm gonna keep it in my bag forever. And the reason I'm gonna keep this in my bag forever is there will be a time where there are those 50 pound bass blitzing on the rain bait. And this is the only, or sand eels for that matter. And this is the only size profile that they'll actually hit. And it will save me. And it will be epic because nobody else will be able to catch anything. And I'll be the only guy hooking up because I have these four inch, tiny little slender profile sluggos that I can only cast at my feet. And that's where the bass are, but that's what's gonna be hooking into the fish. Um, and that's why I have certain things in my bag that I would never otherwise have. So I guess I need to go into my bucktails here. And the other thing that I would never otherwise throw on any normal in general, like I would just never opt to throw this. Um, and this is the, the other plug that I say, um, will save, like, I know this is going to save me one day when I'm out fishing and it has before it actually has saved me and i can catch almost anything on this i've caught bonito i've caught mackerel i've caught bass i've caught decent sized bass too i've caught like 30 inch bass on this and the thing is it's a little hoagie epoxy minnow i think it's a hoagie epoxy minnow it could be wrong but it's an epoxy minnow it's a little green epoxy minnow with a treble hook on the back a small size 2 vmc treble uh, 3x strong VMC treble. Maybe it's a 4x strong VMC treble, whatever. But you throw this out, it's pretty easy. You throw this out, you can twitch it, you can let it fall, it flutters down, you can jig it, you can fish this in many different ways. I can, I fish this in 35 feet of water and I fish this in a foot of water. Um, so, you know, I've literally, when there's mackerel around, blitzing on the surface, and you either, there's two ways you can get them. You can snag them or you can actually have them go eat your thing. You throw this out, you skip it across the surface of the water, the mackerel eat it, boom. You take your mackerel, you throw a nice little hook on it, you wing it out there, and then you can catch a big fish on it sometimes. Uh, and this has saved me a lot of times when that's the case where you have to catch a mackerel to catch a bass 
um, or when the bass are feeding on little sand eels. Um, you throw this out here, it has the same little profile as a sand eel, and you swim this through the water and let it jig it and let it flutter and stuff, and the bass crush it. Um, this has saved me a lot of times when the bass are being very finicky on really weird small bait. Um, and it's just, it's one of those things that I just don't feel comfortable not having in my bag at all times. Um, I do have other soft plastics in here, but yeah, I guess I can go into s stuff like that. Um, uh, I have like the f weirdest stuff in my bag. And these are kind of, this is getting to the more obscure things that I throw uh, at this point. Besides, like bucktails are not that obscure, but um, what was that other thing that I was thinking of? Uh, oh yeah, right here. Um, I do carry other uh, like bigger soft plastics, but this is just what it is. Um, <laughs> the jig must have fallen out of this. It's probably down here. Um, I'm trying to grab all these jigs out of my bag here. Whatever. So I guess I, I what I literally had a little jig head in like a piece of cut hoagie because this was before I actually had the smaller um, a piece of cut sluggo because that was before I had the smaller sluggos and I was trying to match the size bait that they're feeding on. So a bucktail right here. This bucktail has seen some work. I probably had this for four years and probably the same pork rind for four years. It's not pork rind anymore. I think this is maybe a fat cow or otter, otter tail or something like that. Jig strip. Um, but yeah, this has seen some fish. It's never seen a bass over 28 inches before. In fact, I don't think I've ever caught a bass over 28 inches on a bucktail ever. Because again, another plug I don't fish ever, besides maybe the spring. And in very like niche scenarios, big surf, sometimes the, the little white bucktail with a little jig strip on the back is the only thing you can throw. Um, and again, seen some work. You can tell the paint is not on here anymore because I fished this. The bucktail is completely falling out because I've fished this. Um, and it has ca probably caught hundreds. And when I mean hundreds, I mean hundreds of fish. I've had a day on this very bucktail right here where I've caught 80 fish, 83 fish to be exact, on this one bucktail. And I think it was like two hours. It was literally, and I've talked about this story before too, springtime early spring biomass just shows up um i think it was probably may 10th um bigger waves uh i was casting out and there's some uh, like a thing of rocks and the waves were crashing over the rocks and rolling with white water it was probably 10 feet away from me i cast out with my bucktail let it hit in the water get like get, get tension to my line let it sink boom get eaten by fish reel in 10 yards unhook the fish throw it in the water cast out let it sink, boom, fish. Cast in, reel it out, let it sink, boom, fish. For two hours or an hour and a half or something, I was like killing it every single cast. Bang, 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 bang. That action is the action you need in the spring. I'm telling you right now, if you can get in a bite like that where you have unlimited amount of bass, and when I mean unlimited, I literally mean there's unlimited amount of fish. I, I caught fish and then I left with them biting because I, how many, like, I think I caught bass from probably 12 inches to 28 inches that day. So this is, uh, I think this is a, like maybe a half ounce to a quarter ounce bucktail. Uh, and it has a little, one of those like curly, uh, uh, like a teasers on the back. And these are awesome because they look like a fish swimming away. Um, want a little bit more action on your plug in a little slender water, I'm opting for this little white bucktail again. I actually haven't caught a lot of fish on this in particular because I don't really throw it. Again, I threw bucktails a few handful of times and I'm normally throwing that like ounce and a half right there or the ounce and a quarter, I don't know. But something like that. And I don't have a lot of bucktails in here. And Generally, this is packed with bucktails, but I don't throw a lot of bucktails. Here's another one um, that I've fished a lot and caught a lot of fish on. Um, and yeah, it's the same size and you can tell this one's not fished as much cause there's more bucktail on here and it hasn't been all pulled out by bass, but, um, yeah, this is fished a little bit less. Uh, the hooks are really rusted. I've had to sharpen this so many times. It's almost right down to the barb. You can, I don't know if you'll be able to see how small the hook hook is actually on that. If you're 
watching on the video podcast. But yeah, I've sharpened that so many times. It's sharp though. Believe me, like I could chalk that through a fish's mouth. No problem. Um, what else do I have? Probably one more bucktail, right? Yeah. So now I have just a normal, like our, one of the smaller, like quarter ounce bucktails with the straight jig on the back. Um, I'll throw these in the spring for sure. If the, the water's calm and I'm in estuary and I, it, it does, it has its purpose. Do I like fishing that way? No, it's my least favorite way. Bottom bouncing for bass and all, and literally here's the thing about fishing. Fishing's supposed to be fun, you know? You want to catch fish for fun. Now, if you need to, like, use a bucktail to catch a fish, then use a bucktail to catch a fish. Don't throw a pencil all day long and catch nothing. Use the bucktail. But if you can catch a fish on a on a pencil, I'm going to throw the pencil. That's it. 100% of the time, we'll throw a pencil over a bucktail if I can catch a fish on them. And that's just the way I think. Same thing with soft plastic. If I can throw any other plug over the soft plastic, besides really a bucktail, I'm going to be throwing that. Uh, and then I guess you're probably asking, why don't you have spoons in your bag? I do. I, I fish spoons. I have them over there, literally on the other side of the camera. I have little uh, tins, and I, I fished them before. Uh, and I know there's guys that swear by them, and they're one of those plugs that they need in their bag. But I think that you can fish the same way with uh, um, the bucktail. I think it's, it literally is a bucktail with a, with flash. It works well though, and I've I've there I literally I have like um I think they're cast masters or stuff like I've had those I have them, and I've caught hundreds and hundreds of fish on them. Talk about Pollock, my God! If you want to catch a Pollock, go to Cape Ann, throw on a little tin and cast it out there, a little silver tin, and you troll it behind your kayak and go around some of the islands off of Cape Ann, and you will catch Pollock for sure. For sure, you'll catch Pollock. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I guess we can get into just before we sign off here. How, what, I guess I try, I'm trying to give a, a little report because I do hear, like, as somebody that, you know, I'm, like, a fairly relevant on Instagram and people just elect to give me free knowledge for some reason. Um, which I love. And if you want to give me not like I never, like I never burn any, anything like I, I don't, that's just the thing. Unless I'm fishing myself in an area. If you give me, if you talk about any places or whatever, I don't say anything, but if you want to tell me where the bass are in the world, as far as where they are on Cape Ann, uh, Long Island, New York, whatever, where you're killing them, uh, what river you're on, whatever, I won't say anything, and most of the time I don't even fish there. I know places, like I've had reports where I know like the exact, like people have given me the exact locations of bass on Cape Ann, and I haven't fished there yet just because I respect that person's spot so much that I personally won't even go and fish there. Um, maybe that's the why they, why they give me that spot is because they want me to, but um, yeah, I, I most of the time, unless it's a spot that I already fish, if you give me the location and stuff, I won't I won't go there and fish. And it's in part of that is because I know areas that are very similar to that and trying to just repli replicate it in my own like my own like areas that I like to fish, even though that area could be close to me too. But um, regardless, I guess I'm just going off on the tangent right now about not just don't burn people's spots because that's really it's a mean. It's very mean to do. It's not, it's not, um, it's probably the lowest, it's the lowest thing you can do it in fishing. It's beyond, I think it's beyond keeping a, um, like an undersized fish, uh, or an oversized fish at this point, but it's beyond that. Uh, I think that it's beyond like poaching. I think that's like the worst thing you can do in fishing, period. I think that's the worst thing you can do is burn someone's spot slash um, whatever. And sometimes like, you know, there's like, I know there's people that post pictures and video, whatever. Um, and with my video that I'm doing this year, like I, I know very, like I am the one that's sitting behind the computer saying this is going in the video and this is not going in the video. And I know 
what people will be able to decipher and f figure out. Believe me, like I've had a lot of people come and DM me and be like, are you sure you want to do this? Because people are going to find your spots. I have tricks that will be that are extraordinary, uh, which are hilarious. And I would love for you guys to try to come find where I'm fishing. Because if you think you figured out where I'm fishing, it's because I've wanted you to figure that out. And I have posts that I post on Instagram where you think that I posted it because I want you to, because that's where I fish, but that's actually just because I've done that. So you'll actually go fish there. Um, because, and that just shows you like, there is an extent that, and this is why a lot of guys do this too. And they'll, they'll like have their, they'll put pictures online and they'll edit things out and put things places that they're not. Um, and it's, it's pretty funny when you have people trying to go find your spots. It's pretty extraordinary, the extremes people go to. But um, what I'm trying to get at is I want to give, at the end of my thing, I, I want to give the knowledge of where the bass are in the world of the migration and what the reports are with the bass are feeding on in my area and what I've heard over the past few days, weeks, whatever. Um, these are the things that I've heard. Uh, the bass are on Cape Ann. They are in the rivers. Um, they are in almost all of the rivers, even more northern than you'd expect. Uh, are they in the thoughts would be that this ridiculous amount of bait is making it extraordinarily difficult to actually catch fish. Um, and the on the, this is more specifically for Cape Ann for you people on the people on Cape Ann. This is very specific for you guys. Um, and I'll get into a little bit further away at, at some point, but um, that's what's going on as far as the direct location of us. We're getting a, we have too much bait fish. The water's still a little bit too cold, and that's what I think. I think the water is in that high 40s. I think in the rivers it's in that even higher 40s. I'd say when I say high 40s, I'd say between 47 and 48, like off the rocks, and then I would say in off the sandy beaches. And then I would say in the rivers, I would even wager it's up to 49, maybe even 50 in some of the rivers. I've been wading around and I felt the water and I don't have a, like a, I'm, I'm not like actually testing it with a gauge or anything. Um, and I know I could probably look on some website, so, or not some website, but I could look online and find the exact water temperatures of all these locations. But I'm just going off of, my my feel here the water's still a little bit too cold i know it's not quite in the 50s yet once the magic number of 50 hits which i hope is going to happen soon we don't know this for sure it is entirely entirely possible that we won't catch fish until the middle of may do i think that's the case no because i think that we can go beat up in the rivers and i think that if you and i just again another another type of fishing i hate is going way, 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 way back in the rivers uh, and fishing because I'm not super confident with that. Uh, it's one thing if you're in estuary fishing in super skinny water because that can be fun on top water and whatever, but I, I don't really, I'm not super confident in, in very deep rivers to almost fresh water. And that's where I'd be fishing right now. Um, if I had to suggest go fish, go find a river that goes into fresh water and fish that saltwater brackish transition because that's where the the alewife are going to be right now especially if there's alewife and that's where there's going to be bass feeding on those alewife in those rivers um and i would fish early in the morning and in the evenings um and i would be fishing with either topwater spooks or soft plastics um and danny plugs that's where i'd be fishing with um i think that we sh i really do believe that this northern wind is going to blow because we, I think it's south tomorrow, and then it's going to be blowing north, and the north will blow the most of the, the rain bait out to sea, way out to sea or away, which is fine. I don't care about the rain bait. It's the bane of my existence. Um, and if it doesn't blow the rain bait away, um, by, the, by the full moon, we will have mega blitzes of bass on rain bait. Um, and, yeah, that's probably what will end up happening and yeah it will be frustrating maybe we'll catch a lot of fish maybe we won't um but every year is a little bit different so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this or watching slash listening to this podcast uh i hope you guys enjoyed it um it was it was on something that 
I, I fish. I don't really like fishing, but I just, you guys, was a highly, highly suggested thing to talk about. And uh, here it goes, I guess, right? So I'm actually posting this right after here. So you'll know, like, this is the same day. So this is as current as it gets right now. So thank you guys for watching and listening to this podcast. And I will see you next time.